Hello, art friends. My name is Fleshwad, and today I am bringing back another mini series from the channel creating an original creepypasta based on a cursed image. For this story, I enlisted the help of Detective Romwell, a fellow horror author. He will be linked down below. I commissioned this story based off of this cursed image. In the image, we can see a painted white wall, keeping who knows what in, and who knows what out. The top of the wall is lined with barbed wire, and the barbed wire is lined with Christmas lights. The story is titled Red Lights and was written by author Jojo. Make sure to watch this video in the dark with the lights off and your headphones on for the best viewing experience. Twas the night before Christmas and all through the jail. All the prisoners were silent, not so much as a wail. Cells were shut snug and tight in hopes to quell the creature's might. I walked down long, concrete corridors, looking left and right to double-check that the lights above each door were bright green. Given the festive time of year, the lights looked a lot like the ornaments I had watched my children place on their tree. It was a silent night, all right. The only time of year this jail was quiet. It was eerie hearing my footsteps echo off of the concrete. Almost felt like someone was walking behind me. Each door, one by one, adorned by the green light that confirmed the circuit inside the door and the locking mechanism had been met. Though this time of year, the door served as protection from the inmates, as opposed to my own. Typically, I would be subjected to the type of attitude you would expect from criminals that deserved to be in that jail. So in that sense, the night was pleasant, but only in that sense. I looked up into the security camera hanging in the corner of the hall and lifted my hand giving a thumbs up to the security team. Taking one more look behind me, the hallway seemed infinite, a row of glowing green lights that looked like a landing strip. The worst of the worst were contained within those jail cells. Behind metal doors were a laundry list of committed offenses. Some horrible enough that on a night like this, I wished the light would turn red. For example, Audrey Burns, a detestable man. 13 counts of homicide, the first three of which being his own family. Guy just snapped and held a pillow over his kids' faces while their mother bled out on the floor. He tore through five other houses before he was eventually detained and brought to our facility after a short trial. He found out that I have kids of my own. Sick jerk fluffs his pillow every time he sees me. Not tonight, though. He wouldn't dare. It's all extra precautions, though. If all goes according to plan, it won't matter much. Just business as usual. We used to not even check the doors on Christmas Eve. I didn't think anyone would be stupid enough to try and escape, but two years ago we were surprised to find that one of the cell doors was pried open. It took us a while to find any remnants of the inmates' bodies. We found bones and assumed they belonged to him, but couldn't be sure. The guy must have thought the stories we told about this night were all fake. Fairy tales and such. Not entirely his fault. I didn't believe the stories when I was stationed here. I laughed in the face of those who told it to me, those who tried to warn me. Your first Christmas here is unlike any other. No other places on earth have to deal with Christmas as we do, because no other place on earth has so many people that are VIPs on the naughty list in such a concentrated area. After double checking, I turned back around and headed out of the block and then to the front office of the jail, the receiving area. It's where we normally process new inmates and go through the whole routine. But this night, it's where all of the staff met up. When I got there, I was informed that the staff were running behind on the wall and was asked to go help. I wasn't about to say no, so I threw on a jacket and headed outside. As I got out there, a coworker handed me a bundle of wire and pointed to an unfinished section of the wall. I ran over and climbed to the inside of the wall 
Reaching up, I very carefully laced the wire in my hand in and out of the barbed wire that was already in place. One nick in the wire, and the whole parameter would be in jeopardy. I looked out over the wall, the wind whipping snow around, causing visibility to drop about a dozen feet away. We were pretty far away from civilization as it was, but looking out into the snow made me feel like I might as well be on another planet. Before climbing down, I checked the wire over and over again to make sure I hadn't missed a spot. Looking at my watch, we had just an hour to go before midnight, so I decided to help others with their sections. We managed to finish with about 10 minutes to spare, and with the signal given to the main office, we all watched the wall light up. It was quite the contrast, the cold steel barbed wire meant to tear at an inmate attempting to escape, and the festive colors that lit up along the rain wire wrapping around the jail. Christmas lights lit the outside of the facility, various colors temporarily altering the color of the falling snow. It would almost be beautiful, if it wasn't so grim. The barbed wire is supposed to keep things in. The Christmas lights, however, are much better at keeping things out. I could see those around me nervously looking down at watches around their wrist or leaning over to someone next to them to whisper. A few more minutes to midnight. I had just a few more minutes. You know that feeling you get when you leave the house? You get like 20 minutes away and you start thinking, did I leave the stove on? I had that. I couldn't help but feel like there was something I was supposed to do. Quickly, I headed inside and ran through the building, until reaching the security desk. I checked on all the wings of the hospital, at all of the green lights. Until the feeling subsided, I hadn't forgotten to do anything. I was as patient as I needed to be. My fingers quickly pressed down on one of the buttons and I looked at the row of green lights. I collected myself in the security room, calming my nerves before walking back and joining the others. A minute can seem so long sometimes, can't it? When you're waiting for something, how fast time moves depends on how you feel about the upcoming event. If you're dreading it, sometimes time can eject you forward. But if you're excited, it can drag. Either way though, that last minute will always be stretched into the distance. Midnight here, though, arrived with a bang. It came from the east wall. It sounded like someone taking a hammer to concrete, but on the scale of giants. All the guards ran over to the wall and readied their weapons in the direction of the sound. We all stood as silence returned for a moment, before a knocking was heard on the other side of the wall. Then there was a howl. It was a pulsing kind of sound. It would elevate and recede in a particular rhythm. <laughs> the growl was deep and intense, enough bass to it that it shook the snow off the walls. Another pound as the visitor banged against the wall. The howling turned into a huffing of sorts that chirped. It almost sounded like bells. At the top of the wall I could see shadows lifting from the other side. Long and white digits. Four of them stretched above, reaching to the sky. The light bulbs illuminated the thing's fur, painting its various shades. An officer demanded that everyone hold their fire. The creature responded to the man's voice with another. <laughs> the fingers started to curl inward and as they passed over and eventually made contact with the Christmas lights, smoke rose from underneath. There was a squealing noise associated with the smoke. At first I assumed it was coming from the creature, but when the creature's hand retreated I saw the source. The Christmas lights had caused deep and red patches of skin to appear on its hand. It had burned right through the fur and dug into the creature. Where before, red Christmas lights painted the creature's hand red, now thick trails of blood filled that purpose. I stared at the hand as it retreated. The red blood. The red light in front of it. Red lights. I couldn't help but think of my children, of the Christmas tree that I had decorated with them. Their perfect little faces. 
I couldn't help but think of the type of person who would want to hurt their perfect little faces. Something like that must be mad. They must not think too clearly and lack any real impulse control. Even as I heard the footsteps behind me, I couldn't stop thinking of red lights. Turning away from where the creature had hurt its hand, I focused on the sound of frantic and foolish footsteps. I had never seen the creature before, never even asked to look at the security tapes that captured the thing. But I was itching to now. I was worried, though I had been a very good girl this year. I followed those footsteps, the bear prints that were left in the snow as the guards behind me called out, yelling stop, over and over. Not to me, no. They were calling out to Audrey Burns. The year that creature came and one of the inmates managed to escape, the creature left afterward. It was like the thing had gotten its milk and cookies and was full. Every other year though, we had to deal with that creature all night as it tried to deliver its coal to the bad boys and girls. All night, we would listen to its claws scraping the outside of the walls as it howled. All night. Audrey didn't stop. He was the type of person who didn't know how to stop. He wouldn't have been able to make it out, but someone must have messed with the lock on the front gate. So Audrey was able to swing it open with ease. The dozen winter reefs that were tied to the chain link jiggled around as he exited the facility. I continued walking after him. I watched him run through the corridor of the chain link fence that was littered with Christmas lights. It looked a lot like a runway. Then he made it out. Audrey Burns had broken out of jail. Guy ran for freedom. Lord knows where he thought he was going. I knew where he was going, though. Standing in the chain link fence hallways, bathed in Christmas lights, I watched the creature descend upon Audrey. It was vicious and unfeeling, the way that massive frame slammed Audrey to the ground. It was hard enough to kick up the snow around them. The creature was grotesque, but given the circumstance, I felt enraptured by its presence. Thick white fur lined the body, falling over long and thin arms. Not stick then, no. They were still about as thick as my head. But given the stature of the thing, just how large it was, it didn't seem like enough muscle mass to support it. God was at enough muscle mass to keep Audrey pinned to the ground though. His limbs wriggling around like confused worms. He tried to scream, but the creature rested its large hand over Audrey's mouth and nose. I could tell by how his movements got more frantic. He was unable to breathe. The creature opened its mouth. A mouth that was surrounded by thick and long clumps of hair, like a mane or a beard. Its face was something similar to the shape of a horse, but it wasn't as long. Maybe more like a buck. It would make sense given the ghost white antlers on top of its head. Antlers that would put any prize-winning wildlife to shame. With its free hand, the creature reached deep inside its own mouth. It stayed for a moment before it pulled out what looked like a dark rock or a lump of coal. In a swift movement, the creature dug its finger into Audrey's chest and retrieved his heart. It was so simple for the creature, like it was just picking grapes. Audrey's movement started to slow down, his strength fading, until in place of the heart that the creature took out, it put the coal. Audrey started convulsing violently. He was almost dead, but whatever the creature did brought him back. Still laying there, unable to breathe, I felt myself filled with a satisfaction I knew I shouldn't be proud of. The snow continued to fall as the creature turned its gaze to me. Midnight black eyes peering into mine. It howled a sturdy and chilling howl. The loudest I had ever heard it, then it rose up hand still clasped over Audrey's face, treating him like a toy. Standing up straight, the thing dwarfed me. I thought it odd how it didn't ever try to just jump over the wall. I'm sure there are countless things I don't know about that thing, but I know satisfaction when I see it. 
The creature turned its back from the jail and started to retreat away from us, disappearing further and further into the white abyss. As its body exited my line of sight, one more howl rang out. Despite the trouble I was bound to get into, I couldn't help but return its call. Ho, ho, ho. Hope you guys enjoyed that story and the drawing as well. Thank you so, so much for watching, art friends. Until the next video, bye.